Despite two days of violence, Brett Sutton is standing by his call to mandate the vaccine for construction workers. More than 300 infections are linked to the industry that's continued to fail thousands of COVID spot checks. State political reporter Mark Santamartino. For all the anger about being forced to get vaccinated when construction was given a choice, not enough were coming forward. There wasn't a terrific response. I think that goes down to the sense of urgency. Brett Sutton scrapped construction's 90% vaccine target last week, enforcing no jab, no job in the name of speed, as half of the sites checked in a compliance blitz failed. But in the same way that you don't wear a hard hat on your elbow, you wear it on your head, masks on chins, were not doing the job in construction and transmission was occurring. I mean, you've got to take that into perspective. I mean, there's a house somewhere being renovated, they go down there and there's no QR code. I mean, that's a little bit out of our control. 337 infections are directly linked to Victorian construction workers, site visitors and their contacts. 154 builds have been affected statewide, with 239 cases linked to sites in Metro Melbourne, nine of whom live in regional Victoria. The government was left with no alternative but to shut the industry down. The two-week shutdown came into effect at midnight after this violent mob shattered the front of union headquarters. You know, there's 300,000 Victorians at the moment sitting at home with no money thanks to these drunken morons. This is a major blow to the Victorian economy and will put a lot of people on Commonwealth disaster payments. There's a lot of families who will go without income for the next two weeks and they're the, they're the ones who are going to lose out. $750 payments to 300,000 workers will cost taxpayers $225 million per week, while the state economy is estimated to be losing more than $1 billion in the same time period. It's probably right. It's in that order of magnitude. The state government should never punish the many for the sins of the few. I had a conversation with one of our members today. He was in tears. His whole workforce is fully vaccinated. Peter runs a home improvement business in Cheltenham. Today, he was forced to sack his own son. It's just killing me. I've never cried so much in my life. His son is one of two employees that have decided not to get vaccinated. And I respect that. And I respect people that don't want to get vaccinated. It's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Give people a choice. A message with merit lost in a mob that's so readily turned on its own. We're just not going to do that. We're not going to be intimidated by them. A whole lot of workers that are got concerns about the vaccine and they've been whipped up and told lies by anti-vaxxers and extremists. Two weeks is going to be the minimum. For some companies and some sites, it's, it, it could be till Christmas, could be a month, could be six weeks, we don't know. Get the jab done and get, let's get back to work. Live to market, State Parliament. The Premier's released a statement, Mark. Peter, it's come out just in the last 10 minutes or so condemning the acts of this riotous group over the past two days. In part, it reads, there is no excuse for the terrible behaviour we've seen in our city over the last two days. Acts of violence and disruption won't result in one less case of COVID. In fact, it only helps the virus to spread. We know vaccinations are our only ticket out of this pandemic. There is no other way. We have come too far to turn back now. It's those sort of warnings that this group has heard from not only the Premier but Victoria Police for days on end now and clearly peace that isn't working and there may need to be a change of tact. Mark Santo Martino.